Second thing, they devoted themselves to staying connected. Look at verse 42. They devoted themselves to, to the apostles' teaching, the word, and to the fellowship. That word fellowship is the Greek word koinonia. It means being together. Well, I modernized the term to mean staying connected. When you stay connected, it means that you are part of a community of believers. Like being a part of a local church. But to stay connected is not just to go through membership class. It's to connect your life. It's to do life together. That means that you need me, I need you, and we should be able to connect with one another where there's a measure of vulnerability with facts and feelings so we can do life together. See, when you live your life by yourself, it's very lonely. When you live in an isolated way and no one knows who you are and you, are not, you don't know who anybody else is in the faith community, you're not fulfilling the scripture and you're not assured any way of growing. You grow not just by devoting yourself to the Word. You grow by devoting yourself to staying connected. Let me ask you the question. Who do you know in our church? You don't really know. And don't say me. Because I'm the one who stands in front of you week after week to teach you the Word. And that's not good enough. That's not what the Scripture is talking about. The fellowship, as we see, is that also in verse 44... All the believers were together and had everything in common. They shared their lives with one another. And there's something powerful about that. A community is a place of belonging. It's a place of acceptance. It's a place where the deepest thing in you connects with the deepest thing in me. And don't say that there's nobody here that you can connect with or they're not interesting. There has to be somebody that's interesting that you can connect with. And I want you to see, you got to do life together. I got this email this week from one of the members of our church, a chemical engineer, that said, I took the professional engineering exam in April. And by the way, that's an eight-hour grueling exam where everything's thrown at you that's extremely difficult. The person said it was so rough that during the break, the halfway point, I wanted to walk out of there. But I decided just to let me finish up the second half anyway. They did. When I left there, they said, I was so depressed thinking that I failed and this is not going well. I told my life group, that's this group around here that we have, we have it's in different regions, different districts, different you know, communities, and people do life together through life groups. They meet every two weeks, eight to ten people in a group, and they talk about the Bible and they hang out, they eat, they, it's happening in someone's house. And we also have life activity groups where they share their lives around a common interest or an activity. And, and so this person said, I told my life group leader and my life group that I, that I need a prayer. I'm struggling with this thing. I took this, this engineering exam and I'm struggling. And, and, and they pumped faith into me and they encouraged me and prayed with me, this email said. And, she, and then the person said, I told one of the pastors and then they also, they, would, they forced me to stay in faith. They connected me and challenged me to stay in the word. And then on top of that, Pastor David was in a teaching series on faith. Everywhere I turned, I was hearing faith. And the person said, while I was so bombarded with the knowledge of faith, I decided as a step of faith to write an email to prepare it. So when I do get the grade back, hopefully a passing grade, I can send this email as a praise report. And may I say to you, this week, we received the email as a praise report. They passed with flying colors. And so I want you to understand. Come on, we can give the Lord a round of applause. What I'm saying is this. It's when you do life together. It's, you, you grow spiritually when you're able to devote yourself to staying connected. And if you're not connected, remember what Peter tells us in 1 Peter 5, that Satan walks around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. And when you study lions and how they function, how they stalk their prey, P-R-E-Y, they look for the animal that's furthest away from the pack, and that's the one they strike. And if you're a solo thinking, 
thinking that you're all that and you're hot stuff. I want you to know you're just simply prey. You are food for the evil one. And you need to stick with the rest of the body and do life together because that's one of the ways you grow. I learned how to be a husband and a dad by being with men in the church. They taught me by modeling in front of me what it means to love my wife and to love my kids. And that's how I learned by watching them and modeling and learning and talking. And I want you to understand when you're not close enough to this community and you're not connected and you may just come here Sunday after Sunday and you're just aloof and you're disconnected and you're distant. It's one level to have word being taught to you. Whole another level to have life being shared with you. And I want you to see how precious that is. Ladies and gentlemen, growth habit is to make sure you devote yourself to staying connected.